call to order June 14, 2016 recreation meeting. All council members are present. We're going to have, we have Mr. Councilman Joseph do the prayer and invocation. Bow our hands. Dear Lord, bless this great state, this great parish, and all the council members of here today to make the right decision for the kids of this community to have great recreation. Also bless all the armed forces servicemen that serve this great country. God bless America. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I'd like to remind the public if they want to speak, fill out the public comment card, which is at the podium. Um, we're going to make one small change because we have a speaker that has to leave early, Mr. Bartley. And he'll be speaking on agenda item number five. I want to thank uh, Mr. Chairman and the rest of the Recreation uh, Committee. Uh, I'm here tonight to speak in regard to the uh, Hereville Recreation uh, Park. And uh, I just want to give you a little brief history. About 17 years ago, when the uh, Pontchartrain Levy Board was in the recreation business, uh, we bought eight acres behind the Marshawn School, which was supposed to be the recreation park. Uh, it became a park at that time. Then uh, later, uh, and from what I understand, we got some federal grant, and I'll speak to that uh, briefly uh, later. But when we, when we developed the park behind Marshawn, Recreation, uh, Marshawn School, it was eight acres. At that time, uh, later, the parish needed property for a sewage system. And they used that property for a sewage system. The same thing happened in Darrow. Uh, Mr. Tubby Yoon had donated some property in Darrow. We bought this, when I said we, I'm talking about the, the Pine Trent Labor Board, bought the property from the Oof in there. And what happened later when the parish needed uh, property for the sewage system and they were looking for property, the Fifth Ward Volunteer Fire Department had bought 9.8 acres from Mr. Broussard, so we had some additional property behind the fire station. Uh, some of the fire members said, uh, we needed to sell it to the parish. We said, oh, no. I mean, that's community. We got a resolution, went to the fire board, went to the uh, council at that time, and we got permission to give the property to the parish for recreation. Now, from what I understand, and I haven't seen the document, because of the fact that the parish had put federal funds into both property and it had a restriction on it that only it was supposed to use be used for recreation. Now, I know for a fact that the one in Darrow, they asked from Mr. Tibby Yoon, the parish ended up paying them for whatever, whatever amount it, it, it came to. In Hereville, we give the property. Now this, I'm talking about two years ago or so. And right now, right now, the only thing we got on that property that we give for recreation is one piece of equipment sitting in the middle of that property. One piece. If you had a warrant on it, I guess the warrant is, has expired. And this been two years ago. So what I'm, I'm, I'm asking in terms, and the last two times I monitored the meeting for the recreation, a lot of parks was mentioned. 
I didn't hear anything about the Hillary Park, so I'm going to blame my council member as well as, as the rest, you know. And when you look at it and everybody asking, what's going to happen? That one piece of equipment, and then we got a walk trail, which is, I guess, unfinished in one sense. So what I'm asking tonight is, and I see down below, uh, it's going to be an update on Hillary you know, Paul, I brought the the sketch that was made of the plan uh, some time ago, and God rest Mr. Gunny Gotro, uh, it came through them, but it, it's so old, if you see it dilapidated, because I had it in the fire station, but nothing else has happened, nothing, and I don't know from what I understand that the federal government mandated the fact that in as much as the mistake was made in terms of the use of the property for something else, that they, you know, the parish had to do and provide recre another recreation center. So I'm asking the uh, committee tonight and uh, whatever the update is, uh, you know, to tell us what the status, what's going to happen, and what have you. Uh, but And from what I understand, I mean, the, the, the property where the sewage at now, the parish project they're going to do the connection of the Darrow sewage as well as, I assume, to now more also. So that's eight acres, and like I said, we we decided to just give the property to the parish, uh, but nothing has happened. And the, the thing, the answer I got back was the rest of the equipment in the warehouse. I don't know where the warehouse at, but we haven't gotten anything since then. So I hope you would please give us an update so I can well, report we're, we're back. We're going to do that, Mr. Jeff. Let's, huh? let's, let's do that. Well, hold on, hold on. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's it. Mr. Yeah. House, can you give us an update? Yes, sir. Uh, things have been happening at Hillerville. Elevations have been shot. Three times from the fire marshal in the left room. Uh, left room was faked out, been faked out. Uh, new project manager is going to meet with the utilities to fix them this week. And hopefully by the end of next week, Let's go off a of bit on exactly the restrooms and whatever. Is, is Mr. House, is that coming in, in stages, restroom, and then what, What you know, what next? The restrooms will be done first. Then they'll, then they'll add, you know, add what we can add to it, what, what's in the plan. And, and do we have a... a uh, turnaround time in regard to whatever else or next to come? I can't give you one at this time. I don't know. Just taking it, we got the plans done, and we got just got the project engineer on board, and uh, uh, I'd be more than happy to uh, to call you personally and let you know where we stand on it. But we are starting on it. We're going to try to get the commitment done on the park. Councilman Joseph? Can I express something? Yeah. Okay. As y'all know, I've been sitting here a long time with this park ever since they did it. Let's talk down to money. Do we have the money in this budget to do that park? Do to do the bathroom? Do we have the money in we, the budget? We have today? the money in the budget to do the bathroom. Okay. Restroom. Have that. Yeah. And I don't have much, uh, Councilman. I don't know how much is left over. We have uh, to deduct for the the walking trail, uh, the playground equipment. So I don't know exactly what is left over. I just got involved in it deeply now. So. And, and I'm going to help you out, Mr. Don. Can you come back the next recreation meeting and give us a full detail of the overall cost of this park going to cost us and the timeline of every item that you're going to phase there in on? There it is. Because I'm, you know, Mr. Bartley come up here all the time and ask, and I'm about to tie scene, Mr. Bartley. No disrespect, <laughs> Mr. Bartley. No, that's all right. You know, <laughs> but he's been asking for this here, and I agree with him. I went to Washington with Miss uh, Martha back there, and we know the situation with this 
this, this, this property. And it is a serious issue if we do not do what we're supposed to do. And I'm going to say this here. If that community file a lawsuit on us, we are in deep, <laughs> and we've been playing around with this here. And I'm going to have to defend Mr. Bartlett this morning, the, 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 tonight. We, and not your fault. No. Not this administration's fault. But it is, as part of the council, we've been dragging our feet on it. And I'm starting to feel that this park is being neglected based on where it's located at. And that's just the way I feel tonight. Okay? And to add uh, evidence to what you said in terms of uh, lawsuit or whatever case may be, uh, Mr. Les Ewan, the parish, he was an heir from Mr. Tubby Ewan, and he was compensated, or they were compensated for what the, you know, what happened in the Right. You know, he okay. was compensated. That's why we knew, uh, you know, it, it was supposed to be only used for, for recreation. And like I said, there were some board members on the fire board who said, uh, we, let's sell it to them. But n that wasn't necessary because it's a community project and we had extra property. And that's why we said, uh, we give you whatever property you need. And we pass the resolution, and that's in there, and it's gone to, you know, it's official. Other questions? Yeah. Okay. And, Don, back from administration, you know, our, our rec budget is not not huge, you know, and I know we have a lot of projects going on right now. So, you know, I'm in for a phasing in. I, I know we might not be able to build this park completely this year, you know, and but like you said, we got a starting point with the bathrooms and you know I, I don't think it's gonna be all built this year but we'll correct. get as much as we can and I'll give you a full breakdown on the budget it's all, it's all about money and it's rec you know rec we don't have ded dedicated funds for recreation and uh, we do what we can with what we have and we we've come a long ways we got 20 something parks that we have to maintain yeah. throughout the West Bank and East Bank yeah see and, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry Mr. Councilman I realize that but this park was prompt not one year not two years not three years you know and when we did the the giving of the property to the parish that was the understanding that you know at that time it was going to redo it because it's mandated anyway by federal government yeah you know and so i'd like I don't to see all them that. documents too if we can get if that is yeah. available and I understand the frustration, and yeah. we're going to get as much done on this as we possibly can. Yeah, and I, we don't want, you know, we definitely, you know, for a wreck throughout the parish, you know. Everybody needs it for sure. Okay. Any other questions? Any, anybody want to want to ask? With that, we'll go to agenda item number four. Okay, I appreciate it, and thank, thank you. you. Dir director's report, Don Heiser. Okay. Well, the baseball season is finally over. Um, uh, spring season, all stars have started. Uh, youth softball is now over, and the all stars are in practice now. An adult softball, the men and women, uh, I think that starts on June 27th, and they both have 12 teams. We, uh, as you well know, the lighting project, uh, for that we're good to say, Butch Gore Park is complete. We've had the four lights installed. Okay, uh, Stevens Park is 95% complete on the lighting. Uh, Santa Mall is complete. We had six lights installed there. Oak Grove and Donaldsonville Flash Park are up and running. Uh, got new playground equipment installed at Stevens Park. Uh, <clears throat> going to add lights with the playground equipment for the safety of the children. Uh, at, San, uh, at Prairieville Park, we had 18 lights that were out, and they've all been replaced. Uh, the bid for the soccer field has been awarded, and uh, that concludes my report. And we already did, I did item number five, I did item number six, the Jackie Robinson Park update. 
Yeah, that was uh, that was a great day at Jackie Robinson. Uh, we uh, met the next had a full crew out there, and they were out there early in the morning and worked till late in the evening. They painted, they cut grass, they mulched. <coughs> uh, they really beautified that park along with the uh, recreation department. Um, we invited uh, Miss Paula Hill from Methanex, and she wasn't able to come tonight, but they really did a great job and, and uh, just phenomenal what uh, the change in that park. If you haven't gone out to look at it, please take the time to do so. Yeah, Don. Since we got the park up up to par, and, and we we talked about it at a few rec meetings back, that we was going. What what, what is the plans for it? I guess any of the organized sports, you know, the adult softball, or any of them plan on using it? Well, now that we have it, you know, uh, there's an adult softball going. We've been challenged by Methanet to provide a team to play them out there. So I don't know if we. Uh, if we got anything scheduled as on a route. They were complaining basis. they didn't have enough facilities. You know, adult softball came in front of us, and and uh, Jackie Robinson was mentioned once it got refurbished. Yeah, that was about two meetings ago. Yeah, yeah, about two meetings back, you know. So I was just wondering where we were at with that. If, if or you, you do have enough facilities for the adult softball as we speak with the 12 teams? For we this do. season, yeah. For this season, we do? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. And I guess and the, I guess the follow-up question to that would be the park at Jackie Robson softball park. Is it up to par, up to code to host games there? Well, we had a fen we had a tree fall on the fence like the day before we went out there to do the work. So I do have some fencing left to do, um, and it, minimal light work, but it's it'd be good. That's a nice field. I, I, it's beautiful. Kids played on it it's before. It's a big field. You have to run a long way to catch a ball in the outfield. It's a deep field. It's, it's a big <laughs> park. So. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, and I, I went out last week, and, and uh, I mean, the basketball goals, everything looks good with the new chains and everything on them. So, I mean, it looked like they were, the landscaping was really good. And, I mean, I know we mentioned going here earlier, but we were out there in knee-deep water and in bathrooms, and I'm glad to see all that, you know, that taken care of. So, uh, I know he... He had a problem with it, but uh, I'm glad that they uh, all participated and it's looking good. Methanex was in charge of it, and, I, I, and I'm afraid to start naming the companies that contributed to that, but yeah. we had a lot of local companies donate, uh, uh, mulch, uh, concrete, just all yeah. kinds of things were donated. Yeah, but I'd like to make sure that Methanex gets a, gets a letter from either the Rec Commission or the whole entire council in appreciation of what they've done at that facility, if we could. Make sure that they know, you know, how much we appreciate them. Absolutely, being a community involved group. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, I have a question. Oh, um, I, I was just told something about the Hillaryville Park. Um, go back for a second. What is the cost in the bathroom? To, to build the bathroom. To build the bathroom. I think it's. Uh, I think it's about thirty-two thousand for. Uh, the budget on it. Okay. That was, yeah, we went back. You're thinking of the 80? Yeah. yeah. 80, it, so 80. it's not 80. No. It's not 80. That's it's good. It's not going to be 80. <laughs> <laughs> but we did build one for 80,000 now. We did. All right. But we, yeah. Okay, I'm just making sure one build another one for 80,000. No. We've got to get Lord. utilities to this, you know. I don't know. I understand. Wow, it's a lot for a bathroom, but that's good. Okay, good. Thirty-two thousand is more, much more reasonable. That's all I had. Thank you. Okay. Go to agenda Poche. item number seven: <coughs> Homeless House Levy Trail. Eric Poche. Why are you wasting money on the last bill? Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Eric Poche. Uh, back in two thousand nine, I was working for another company. We did a feasibility study on Levy Top Trail. Uh, in the uh, Pontchartrain Levy District's jurisdiction between uh, Baton Rouge and New Orleans. And it happens that Ascension Parish's uh, phase one that was recommended was a little piece that's uh, a little bit less than three quarters of a mile uh, between where Burnside or LA 44 runs into River Road going up river to Homer's house. Um, Ascension Parish up to this time has not had a section of trail done as other parishes that have had uh, portions of their, their trail network done on the levee. Uh, and this looked like a good opportunity 
uh, to do something to have this be a phase one uh, since Mr. Kelly is now in the process, although it's had a few hiccups, he's finally getting moving on his uh, riverboat landing in the museum at Homer's house. Uh, and I was contracted by an outside firm to, uh, on behalf of Ascension Parish to complete a recreational trails grant application for Ascension Parish. Uh, I have given you information that shows a, an exhibit as far as what the section of, of trail would cover, the distance and in, in, in the location of the section of trail, as well as an estimate of probable construction costs, looking at the, the last two numbers, which would be uh, or the last three numbers. Uh, one would be the grant funds available. Then you would have a, uh, the grant is for $100,000. Uh, the parish is required to put up a 20% match, uh, as well as any excess construction funds. <clears throat> what I'm here for this evening is to ask for a decision as to whether you guys want to move forward to the council to recommend, uh, uh, I guess, approval for uh, the parish president to sign the documents that would re be required to submit the, the grant application uh, as well as a commitment from the parish for the maintenance and for the, the funds that would be uh, necessary for construction. Question. Yeah, Eric. Uh, yeah. I, w I was thinking it was a whole lot longer, you know, trail. This is right in front of the homeless house, correct? This is from... Basically, where Burnside runs yeah. into River Road, up about three quarters of a mile okay. to Homer's it, it is a public trail, right? It's going to be open to yes. the public. Okay. Where will the people park to go walk the on people this trail? That, well, the great thing about this is that Mr. Kelly, through his project at Homer's house, and he is on board with this. We've met with him and talked with him. He is certainly amenable uh, for tourism to, to go, to visit, to park there. Uh, he will have ADA access both to get across River Road and to get up on top of the levee. So the, the, the portion of this project will not require any, any levee access or any parking or anything like that. This project that the parish is applying for is strictly to pave it from wherever Mr. Kelly's trail ends because he's going to do a small portion of trail in conjunction with his project down uh, about six and a half tenths of a mile to uh, LA-44. So how, what's the total now? It's about 2.65 miles, a little bit less than three-quarters of a mile. You know, I'm big on, this, on the trail, especially the levee trail for us, the bike trail, but <coughs> it looks like the benefit is not for the public. It's actually for a business person is what I see. You know, that's who's going to actually benefit mostly from this. It's not the public. It's actually the homeless house and bringing people in, and, you know, that's it's all about well, and I mean, you can look at what, it. What do you have to walk six tenths of a mile? It's not a much to see other than what the homeless house is right there in the front. Well, one of the things that makes it, uh, because a lot of these parishes are starting in either upriver or downriver end of their parish, and, and what the eventual hope is is to tie a paved surface all the way from Jefferson Parish all the way to, but, to Baton Rouge. Yeah, but with that, with that, you got to cross so many pipeline, chemical pipelines from Baton Rouge to New Orleans that are restricted to actually be on the levee unless you certified because of the hazards that's on that levee. Well, what, 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 what would happen in that case? Well, I don't see it going from one end to the other. I, I, I don't think that's... Well, if you look at St. John and St. Charles Parish, there's many instances where there are pipelines and there are plants. Uh, as long as... Uh, the parish works with the entity to ensure that they can maintain their uh, security measures. That there hadn't been a problem with it because you, and, you've got St. Charles Parish is just about completely yeah. done. And, and you did say that the parish would be responsible for maintaining this walk once it's built. Right. Correct. Any other questions or comments? Oh. So the twenty five thousand that's what the parish is. The twenty five thousand dollars is is the match. The excess funds required are the funds that would be required to complete the uh, construction cost. So you're basically looking at 
And of course, these numbers can can certainly change. This is a preliminary estimate, but you're looking with the parish. If it if it works out to be exactly like this, the parish would have to come up with about $162,000. Now, the $25,000 match, the parish can either subcontract the engineering, design and engineering, and surveying out, or the parish can do that themselves, and that can count towards the match. So that's why that particular uh, um, element was left off of, of this. So it's not 25 we're paying, we're paying 162,000. Yeah, it, it, based on this estimate. And correct. continue to maintenance it when it's needing it. Correct. Is trail going to be lit, uh, light and have lights on it? No, it does not have to be. No changed. lights. Well, Mr. Chairman, I, I mean, we have a lot of cyclists in the in the parish here, and they need a place to go. They're using Alligator Bayou and and our state roads. Uh, I've I've mm -hmm. seen them on Highway 933, Highway 42, and I wouldn't advise that for anyone. But uh, we need a place for cyclists to ride their bikes. Um, I don't know about this 162,000 though. And if I could, <laughs> add, if I could add one more thing, will, will bikes be accessible to it? Sure, sure. So I mean, it actually, it's, of miles, it's a multi, it's bike. a multi-use trail overall. And, and add one more thing to this: the reason that, that this has come up specifically now is because the group that I'm working with now is looking at a designation to, in each parish for the trail. To, to go the complete distance. As it stands now, the, the crown of the levee is paved with aggregate. Uh, and what we're trying to do right now is we're trying to work with the levee district to put a finer aggregate on top of that so that it would be accessible and people would be able to use it uh, for both walking and, and riding bicycles. And then as funds become available, because each parish is taking certain sections and they're paving a little bit at a time trying to get it through that parish. What we would like to do is to have it accessible and have it usable over the entire length. And then as each parish, as the funds become available, you can pave it because ideally you would like to have a paved, you know, you'd like to have a paved pathway over the whole entire distance. But until that's able to happen, you would at least make it usable. And then as the funds become available, you could so pave sections. I guess in, in the next parish, Iberville, how far are they with? Uh, Cur currently, Iberville has one mile paved down around Roberto's. Mile? That's right. Okay, and then St. James, how much do they have? St. James has about two and a half miles. Uh, it'll be about three miles. They've got a two-mile section that's that's about going out to bid probably in the next four or five months. St. Charles is just about through with that parish. St. John is about two-thirds to three-quarters of the way. Uh, and then St. James is starting by the bridge at the downriver end of their parish, and they're and working their way up okay. upriver towards Ascension. So, <coughs> so you're saying right now if somebody got on the levee and wanted to ride their bike anywhere as gravel, they could go the whole distance mm -hmm. legally? Yeah. They oh, wouldn't yeah. cross over some territories that would be restricted? They can't, yes. They, there are going to be some areas, I mean, like the power plant there where you know, right down river at, at Burnside. I mean, there's fencing that goes across that. Right. There are elements, and in, in that's one of the things that we address in the feasibility study. Those are all things that have to be worked out because of obviously the levee district is not going to do anything. Their number one goal is flood protection. Correct. So they're not they're not <coughs> fought or against it one way or another. Uh, they just want to make sure that anything that's done is not going to prohibit any landowner from from the, the use of his his property. Uh, but the legislature back in 2009 and again in 2011 made it possible for the levies to be, pay, crowns to be paid for recreational purposes specifically. Councilman Joseph, I mean Councilman Lawler. Okay, you go, Mr. Sorry. Lawler. Thank you. <laughs> um, two things, what is the nearest um, point from this area that another parish has paid? Baton Rouge, uh, East Baton Rouge Parish has it from downtown just about up to Ben Hur. Uh, they've got another section that's going to tie up to the upriver end of uh, Casino property. Uh, probably in the next, I don't know, year or so, they, they're they're going to be uh, 
I only have about a mile or so left to get to the parish line at Manshack. Uh, Ibbeville Parish is probably going to be slow going because most of the east bank of Ibbeville Parish is within the city of St. Gabriel in the west bank. The county seat doesn't have as much of an interest in seeing the East Bank paved. Okay. Uh, so that may be a kind of a hiccup. Uh, but St. James has about, like I said, about three miles done. Uh, St. Uh, St. Charles is almost completely paved. There, I mean, this <coughs> section is not going to be close to touching anything else. No, not at this time, no. And do we have a long-term contract with Homeless House for parking, or is it just their word? No, I mean, right now, it, it, it's just that word. But there's a memorandum of understanding that can be uh, done, such as what you would need to have with the Pontchartrain Levy District, uh, because it benefits both entities. It benefits Mr. Mr. Kelly as well as the parish to allow public access to the using his facility. But I guess the big thing is, that, you know, is he, he has a large wedding there at his facility. It fills his parking lot up. I'm sure he doesn't want people just going right walk on the levee and people parking where they going to park if they run out of parking because he only has a certain amount of parking. Yeah, oh, no, and, and that's true. That's I mean, there yeah. may be times where he shuts parking off for the public, and yeah. that, that's part of my concern is without a contract, enforceable contract, having a memorandum of, of understanding isn't going to secure the public and secure that if a family drives all the way out there from Santa Ma and then, boom, there's a wedding they can't park. Well, yeah, I mean, you can have you you can you can enter into an agreement and have a memorandum of, of understanding that designates that he says that he's going to set aside two or three or four parking spots that would be specifically for the use of patrons wanting to get access to the levee trail. And that's not really a huge deal, and I really honestly don't think, in, based on my conversations with him, that that would be a, any problem to do that. One other thing, what's the timeline on this? The uh, the funds would become be probably be awarded September October. It would probably be after the first of the year in 2017 when all of this would get going. So the money wouldn't actually have to be budgeted until next year. Uh, it's basically now is just a, a, a commitment from the parish saying yes, we want to do it. Yes, we'll provide the funds for construction and allowing the parish president to sign the documents. One more thing. <laughs> Don, budget-wise, you definitely would have to amend the budget to go with $162,000, right? And that would be coming out of the rec fund. How is that going to put a damper on the rec fund? Major damper. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm Jesse Lambert. Yeah, I would, I would like to, uh, I know a couple of, of guys maybe, if it would be all right, would, would not, I'd like to see the buy-in from the, from the cyclists first before we start moving on this. See if we can set a few meetings up and see if this would even even fly. And uh, maybe see if because I mean they they I mean they we have people coming from East Baton Rouge Parish, the surrounding parishes to use Alligator Bayou for their riding their bikes. Mm -hmm. And I mean that I mean that it it's it's there so I mean, we need we need a place for them to go, and and other than the state highways and Alligator Bayou, if we could get maybe get uh, Don in with them to see if if they would be interested, uh, I'd rather wait on this and uh, see what we can do. I have one other question about the design. Is it a loop like it shows on the the picture mm -hmm. here? Or is no, it I mean that's does that's just a designation as far as encircling, yeah, just, just, just to, to focus on it. Correct. Sorry, no, my, it's not loop. My concern is we have six tenths of a mile on a bike that takes you no time. I mean, we're gonna have people going back and forth, hitting each other. Six or? tenths is that far. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think I think what Dempsey, what you're talking about is they have biking clubs that ride right. long distances. Right. And I don't know what they'd get out of going six tenths of a mile. Well, I mean, one of the one of the, the advantages of what we're trying to do also in in using the finer aggregate that would compact and make a more sturdy surface for bike riding, the serious bicycle riders would ride on the paved section as well as on the on the gravel section. Uh, and just before I forget, 
it's if you guys want to wait on this, I completely understand. But the reason that I'm here is that the the if you don't do this tonight, the deadline is July the first, so it would be next year before it would be available again, which is perfectly fine. Uh, because the the application that that I have completed thus far would still be usable. I mean, it wouldn't like it's not like it would be wasted. Uh, if 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 you guys feel that the parish would be in a better position to explore it further and, and do it next year. That's totally up to you. I just wanted to let you know that. Is this a concrete or asphalt? Asphalt. I've seen uh, asphalt concrete. That's what I was. It just seems, how, how wide a path is this? Ten feet generally. It's, ten, yeah. it's a ten foot path. Mm -hmm. Three inches thick. Yeah. Six tenths of a mile. It just looks a little costly. That's what I was wondering. Joseph? Yeah. Eric, I appreciate you coming here. And I, I know this is one of those items that's been on that list for a while. <laughs> I, I really do. <laughs> yeah. And I understand. Um, but look, I'm going to be honest with you. For me to vote to even obligate any money to this project when we have more issues and playground around this parish to go with no, I a three quarter of a mile track, there's no way in the world I can vote to even, you know, look at you know, obligating this kind of money or even obligating the parish. Yeah. This this recreation system is so unstable, so, I, 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 you know, I'm I'm against it. That, I'm just letting you know. No, right I understand. Now. I understand. So. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. All right. With that, we move to agenda item number eight. Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Second by Councilman Tyler. Tyler, meeting adjourned.